Thank you. Thank you for me. Everywhere. Everywhere. Thank you. Thank you for love. Someone. Someone like me. Thank you for taking. Thank you for taking. Taking good care. Taking good care of me. That's it. Anybody thank the Lord for thank, taking good care of them? Come on, let's do it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Protecting. Protecting me. Thank you. Thank you for watching. My enemies. My enemies. Thank you for covering. Thank you for covering. Covering me. Covering me. Thank you. Thank you for taking. Taking. Say you knows, you know. That's it. Anybody know that? You know. That's it. Say you know. Somebody said thank you for dying. Say thank you for dying on Calvary. Thank you for shedding. Thank you for shedding your blood. Your blood for me. Thank you for making. Thank you for making. That's the part I like. Oh wait. Thank you. Thank you for taking. Taking good. Taking good care of me. Let's sing that again. Thank you for dying. Thank you. Say. Thank you for dying. On Calvary. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your, your blood for me. Thank you. Thank you for making, making all kind of ways. Thank you for taking. Thank you for taking. Taking good care.
it is no secret what God can do what he done for the he'll do for you Times of time ring out the news. Another day is through. Someone slipped and fell. Was that someone you? You may have long. For added strength, your courage to renew. Do not be disheartened, for I bring hope to you. It is no secret what God. Can do what he done for the he'll do for you with arms wide open he'll pardon you. Can you believe? that today it is no secret what God can do can we say it one more time it is no secret what my God can do you you and you with arms wide open he'll pardon you it is no secret what God can do God bless you. We greet you again in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We greet you from the Bethel Missionary Baptist Church, 2106 Mill Street, Montgomery, Alabama. We're glad to have each and every one of you this second Sunday. This Sunday in September, we're still one Sunday closer to coming back together. Hallelujah. We're thankful for, to God for bringing us together. He's kept us safe and he's seen fit for us to share together, although virtually. We uh, thank God for the blessings that he has bestowed upon us. We continue to ask you to pray for all of those who are sick, those who have been affected by the coronavirus, those in the hospitals, sick rooms, rehabilitation. We, we also are thankful and we're so glad to have, amen, listening to those who are listening us to us from places of uh, detention. We ask God's blessing upon you this morning. Hallelujah, we thank God. We are here again to just remind you that it is no secret what God 
can do. We're going to go on in our service. We want to pause right now as we thank God for the opportunity to worship him through our giving. We ask that you prepare your offerings and have them ready for the blessing. For he said, honor the Lord with your first fruit. And we know that God is faithful. He will owe no man. He said, he that gives to the poor, lend to the Lord. He said, I will open up the windows of heaven when we are faithful. Paul said, my God shall supply your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Jesus said, I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing so much so that you shall not have room enough to receive. With our blessing, with our offerings, amen, prepare, let us ask God's blessing upon them. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for what you have done, what you're doing, and for what you're going to do. We thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity of worshiping you through our giving, for we know that giving is an act of worship. We pray now that you would bless each gift and each giver, even to a hundredfold. And what you do, we'll give you the praise, honor, and glory for it in Jesus' precious name. Amen, amen, amen. Again, we're so thankful for, to those who have uh, been so faithful to this church and to the cause of Christ, the kingdom of God during this time of pandemic. We ask you to continue to pray for those who are going through what they're going through. We ask you to pray for all of those who are bereaved. We ask you to pray for the family of Sister Ethel Hubbard, who was funeralized on yesterday at one o'clock from the East Woods uh, Cemetery. We ask God's blessing upon her, her children. We ask God that you would keep them in your prayers. We ask you to have mercy upon the family of Pastor Giles Williams in his passing. We ask that you would have mercy upon his children and his family, and amen, and for all of those who are going through a time of bereavement. Let's remember those sick in the hospital, uh, Dorothy Roberts, who has been in rehab after surgery, and for all of those who are getting ready for surgery, we ask you to keep them in your prayers. We're so glad to have Sister Willie Gauthier Williams out of the hospital, amen. And uh, she was complaining about, I understand that I didn't call her, but I, I called her, but I could never get her. Amen. Amen. So maybe I'll, girlfriend, I guess I'll give you a call sometime and we'll talk. Amen. When the line is not busy. The, the, the song says Jesus is on the main line and the line is busy, but that's not so with Sister Williams. I ask you to continue to pray for her and all the sick, those who are going through a time of uh, sickness. I ask you to pray for Sister. She's been on my mind, Sister Mary Holly. We're thankful to Clarence Jackson and all her neighbors there who have been taking care of her, as well as all of those sick, those who cannot take care of themselves. Let's keep them in our prayers, Sister Myla. Harris. Amen. Pray for her and her son as she goes through what she goes through. Sister Lula Porterfield. Let's pray for her. Sister Nettie Grant. Let's pray for her. Amen. Brother Andrew Miles over there in uh, Western Hills. We pray for her, her daughter and caretaker. God see you. We ask you to continue to pray for them. You know you don't know what you well, you, you know where you're being, but you don't know where you're going. And we ask you to continue to pray for those who are uh, taking care of loved ones who cannot, can no longer take care of themselves. Let's keep them in our prayers. Let's remember those in the nursing homes and those who've been somewhat isolated from their loved ones and their friends. Let's keep them in our prayers as they go through what they are going through. Amen. 
again, we are one Sunday closer to coming back together. Let's keep praying. Let's keep praying for all those in leadership. Let's pray for uh, uh, leaders that God would guide them. And let's remember this pandemic. Let's do the things that will help us wear that mask. No matter who says you wear that mask and take care of yourself. Amen. Let's pray for them. Do your social distancing and all of those things that wash your hands and all those things that will help you stay safe, especially to our senior citizens and those with comorbidity. We ask that you be extra careful. If you don't have to do something and take a chance, don't do it. I realize that you have to live. You have to do things from time to time, but be careful, extra careful. Amen. We're trying to survive this pandemic. And if we, if we can do like the psalmist said, we've been endures for a night, but joy will come in the morning. All you got to do is wait on the Lord. He'll come and see about you. Amen. We're going to move right on. Uh, expeditiously we want you to uh, think of uh, those who are in need of prayer we ask you to as we prepare to come to the altar we ask you to bring them the, though not physically but virtually let's bring them to the altar and let's bring whatever situation circumstance sister Angela we're gonna ask you to continue to pray for her let's bring our circumstance our situation to the Lord to the altar and let's leave them there. Shall we look to God, our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, and ask him, let's bring our, our problems, our conditions. For he said, not if we pray, but when we pray. He said, man should always pray and not faint. Shall we look to God and pray, our Father in heaven, we thank you. We praise you. We give your name the glory, honor, and the praise for all that you have done, doing, and are going to do. We thank you for this privilege now of worship and fellowship. Thank you for all the believers that have gathered together here in the name of Jesus, though not uh, physically, but virtually. For you said, where I am in the midst, where two or three are gathered together in my name. And we have gathered here in the name of Jesus because that's the only name given among men whereby we must be saved. We know that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. And God, now we just bow now. Amen. In acknowledgement of his kingship, in acknowledgement of his lordship. And we come because, Lord, we need you. And we need you right now. We ask now, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would forgive us our sins. For you said if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then, God, we ask you, God, to help us to live the life that's pleasing in your sight. Oh God, we forgive those who have done us wrong and mistreated us and, and talked about us. We forgive them in the name of Jesus. We ask God in the name of Jesus that you would touch all those who are sick. Remember those in the hospital. We pray, God, that you would touch them with your healing virtue. We pray for those who are taking care of them. We pray for God that you would watch over them, keep them, bless their homes, bless their family, keep them safe during this pandemic. Pray for our first responders, the, 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 the ambulance workers paramedics and policemen or firemen and all of those who are serving others in this time of pandemic. We pray, oh God, that you watch over them, bless their homes and bless their family. Give them the faith to keep on going in your name. And then God, we pray that you would bless us today by touching us and speak through these lips of clay. And we pray, God, that you would bless your word as you go forth. And may we learn from your words. Let your power, let your love, let your holy anointing, oh God, anoint us and speak through us today. And what you do, we'll be careful to give your name all the praise and all the glory. We pray that you bless these musicians in the name of Jesus, 
we give you glory and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Bless Brother Barnes right where he is right now. We ask God that in your time, bring him back to us and we'll give you the praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you for your amen continued participation and thank you for your support. Hello, my name is Reverend Pastor George Price, pastor of the Snowden Valley Baptist Church, and I come to you speaking on behalf of your great pastor, the Reverend Calvin McTeer. Calvin McTeer and I go a long way back. I considered him as a brother, even under my father, just not a brother in ministry or brother in the church family, but a brother, uh, as a biological brother, under my father, the Reverend, the late Reverend H.L. Harrison Price. Amen. And, 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 and I can remember him long back, I think he was in high school yeah. at Jeff Davis. Yeah. And I was a little bitty boy. And I've always looked at him like, this is the big brother that I always wanted to have. And I watched him grow up and he is an extraordinary, and I'm not telling you what I've heard, I've watched him from his teens all the way up. He's always been a very committed young fella to grow into a spiritual and committed young man. If I followed him, my dad, as close as my oldest brother, Kelvin McTeer followed him. Yeah. Amen. I would have been doing what I'm doing a long time ago. Yeah. I just want to encourage him to keep being a light to the world. He was yeah. one of the few preachers and young preachers that not only preached the word of God, but he lived and was the perfect example of God's word. And I thank him for that. And I want to encourage you, Pastor McTier, to keep on keeping on. I didn't get to know all the previous pastors of Bethel Missionary Baptist Church personally, but I do know Reverend McTier. And I want to say to the Bethel family and Reverend McTier, happy 153rd church anniversary. Yes. You're doing a wonderful job. Keep on keeping on. Don't look back. Stay on the battlefield for God. Yes. God bless you and keep you is my prayer. Amen. We're going to go right on in the service. We're going to ask your attention as we get ready for the word. Let's join in the, just a little bit of this old him here shine on me shine let me hear you on me I If the lighthouse shines on me, let it shine on me. Shine on me, let the light 
from the lighthouse shine on me God bless you may it keep you <clears throat> is our prayer we're going to move right on you know, ask your attention to the reading of the word we're trying to stay focused and in the channel the lane that we've been in focusing on leadership our scripture for today will be from the first book of Kings chapter 21 beginning reading with verse number one Hallelujah. <clears throat> if you have it, say amen. Let me read that into our hearing. And it came to pass after these things, these things that had happened in verse tw chapter 20. Listen, that Nabal, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard which was in Jezreel hard by the palace of Ahab king of Samaria the northern kingdom and Ahab spake unto Naboth saying give me thy vineyard that I may have it for a garden of herbs because it is near unto my house and I will give it give thee for it better a better vineyard than it or if it seemed good to thee I would give thee the worth of it in money and neighbor said unto Ahab the Lord forbid it be it not so that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee and Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which neighbor the Jezreelite had spoken to him for he had said I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers and he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and wouldn't eat no bread but Jezebel his wife came to him and said unto him why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread and he said unto him, Because I spake unto Nabal the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And Jezebel his wife said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise, and eat bread, and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Nabal, the Jezreelite. God bless the reading of his word, sinking down deep in our heart, bringing up fruit, some 30, 60, and 100 fold. I want to talk about today the perils of weak leadership. <clears throat> Amen. We're continuing our thrust, talking about leadership. And I think it has a contemporary juxtaposition uh, today as we look at what has gone on in this old dispensation writing where Israel is led by a blebby of unrighteous kings and God is holding them accountable um, God see the, the Bible teaches us that promotion comes from the Lord it doesn't come from east or west and one of the things we must all remember that we all must give an account to God whether we are high or low 
and leadership is not exempted, good folks. Every one of us must give an account. Paul, uh, I believe James said, don't be teachers, don't be no, because you're going to uh, be judged a little harsher. It's more expected out of you when you are out there in front. Amen. To him, what did he say? To, much, to whom much is given, much is, ret much is required. We must keep that in mind. The higher you go, the more expected out of you. Actually, the higher you go, the more sacrifice is expected out of you. And if for some reason, I think leadership today has, even at whatever level we want to think of, our, uh, there's been a misconception about leadership. It's that the higher we go, the more in it for me. But Jesus said, if you would be great in the kingdom of God, you must be a servant. It's not what in it for me or what I'm going to get out of it or what, what my friends are going to get out of it. It's what can I do for the greater cause. Yeah, we get, uh, we get positions and we are over resources. And we, some of us, think that the resources are for us instead of for the good of the public. That's, that's why people, are, we, have, we have forgotten about ethics. Ethics means right or wrong. And ethics has to do with the perception of right or wrong. Ethics says, I don't do it if it looks like it's wrong. Help me, somebody. That's why when, you, when it comes down to money, uh, we don't just trust one person with money because it's the perception that they can, that person can steal. Uh, ethics says that I don't, want to have, I, I, I don't want to have no accountability. Ethics says I want accountability. And so leadership has to be strong. Leadership has to be sacrificial. And in this particular text, we see our friend, our, this, this same king, King Ahab, who had done many things contrary to the will of God. For one of the things that he did was he married Jezebel, who was uh, 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 served idol gods and God had said to them he said I will not let you marry their daughters or their sons because you will be uh, you'll be tempted to follow their gods that was his warning and Solomon taught us that he built uh, homes and even temples for his wives and all of their false gods and so it, this was one thing, and he served Baal. But yet God was patient with Solomon, with, with Ahab, in all that he had done. In the previous chapter, God had delivered him, and he was supposed to turn and, and punish the king of Syria, but they let him go. And God came to him through the prophet and said, you let him go. Your life will be for his. And he was sad. And then in this text, we see here uh, the misconception about leadership. It, it, leadership is not about uh, being in a position where I can get what I want. It's simple. In Samaria, there was this place close to Jezreel, and there was this man named Nabal who had a vineyard that was close to the palace. And you know, uh, Ahab uh, looked at it and he lust after it. He wanted to have this vineyard. There may have been, as he said, better vengeance, but he wanted for convenience sake. But I came to tell you, 
it's not good to think that you can have anything that you want. Yes, that's what happened. Some of us are the same way. I know, you, you know some folk like that. Some men like that. They, want, they, they think they can have any woman they want. Uh-oh. Talk back to me. And say, Amen. Yeah. That, but everything is not meant for you. There are some things you, you shouldn't have. Because if you get them, you're going to lose what you got. Can I get a witness? And he went to neighbor and offered neighbor a proposal. Hallelujah. And the proposal was, neighbor, will you give me your vineyard? And I will give you one better than this. And uh, if that doesn't work, I'll pay you for it. And neighbor said to him, well, I, uh, I can't give you this. God forbid, because this vineyard means more to you. It's more than a vineyard because it's been in my family. It's been handed down. And see, when you leave legacy, a legacy is more than that which is physical. It's, it had been in his family, and his, his, the, the, each generation had entrusted it to the hand of the next generation. And that ought to mean something. What your parents have gone through, what your foreparents have gone through, it ought to mean something to you. I think about, even in this political ring, I think about what my foreparents did. All of those who marched up and down uh, the streets during the protests uh, and the civil rights movement to get a right to vote. And here we are. We have uh, received this right for them. Some have died. Some were beaten. Some were mistreated. And yet, I don't appreciate it enough. Help me, somebody, to go out and take advantage of it. God forbid that I part from the legacy of my four parents. Help me, somebody. And, and neighbor said to him, no, it won't work. I can't do it, even if I wanted to help me, somebody. That brings me to my first point, and that is uh, the point of privilege. Yes, some of us think that leadership is a position of privilege, means that I, I'm in charge, I'm large and in charge, I can do what I want to with impunity. I can treat people like I want to treat them with impunity. And you know, when you get too high, God can bring you down. And when you get where you don't know how to talk to folks. And you know, I just see it, you see it so much. People ask questions and they just talk to them like they're a little child. They, they talk just because you got a position, you are in a place of, of, of supervision. That does not give you the right to condescend. That does not give you the right to talk down. That does not give you the right to denigrate those who are under your supervision. Your, your position is not a position of privilege. Well, you can do like you want to do. There, there, I, there, there are some things that come with, I, I got this. Help me somebody. So he goes, to neighbor and neighbor turns him down. Yes, yes. Why did he want it? He wanted it for his own pleasure. Look at that. He wanted, uh, yes, yes. I, leadership is not, not having fun. Y'all don't hear me. It's about, I keep telling you, it's about sacrifice. Hallelujah. It's about uh, what can I add to the good of the order? And I see here, Nabal turns, uh, he turns, yes, he turns Ahab down. And Ahab goes home in a pity party, lays across the bed and refuses to come to supper. And here comes Jezebel 
Baal, his wife. And she says to him, Ahab, what's wrong with you? you somebody must have done something to you. Uh, yes, yes. And notice, he said, a uh, neighbor wouldn't sell me his vineyard, and I'm sad about it. And she, watch this, watch this privilege here. She says to him in uh, verse 7, do you now govern the kingdom? Aren't you in charge? Aren't you the man? Don't you know that you can have what you want? You are Lord. Come on. I heard somebody say, it's vested in me. Y'all don't hear me. Yeah, but I came to tell you, power belongs to God. Power is in his hand. You and I are going to have to give an account. Even though you are in a position of power, but that does not mean that you can do what you want. But she convinces him, let me handle it. Can I get a witness? Yes. And I see a, 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 another point about uh, weak leadership. Weak leadership is perplexing. What I mean by that, weak leadership seeks to pass the buck. That's what's happening in verse 7. He is supposed to be the king. He is supposed to be her husband. He is supposed to be the head of the house. He is supposed to be the head of Israel. And yet, he lets her tell him what to do. And he kind of plays it off like, I'm going to let you do it. And I ain't going to know nothing about it. But when you are in the position, you are better brain. If you are the head of the house, what happens at that house is attributed to you because you were in charge. Is that not what God said to Adam? <clears throat> Adam, where art thou? And he said, the woman that you gave me, yeah, who told you you were naked? Did you eat of the fruit? The woman that you gave. He started to passing the book. And the woman said, the snake, the serpent beguiled me. You see, leadership takes accountability for their action. Yes, I see it right there. He, he passes the book. I will give it to you. Look at this in the next one, and we're going to move. I see the plot, the plot, the scheme, the trick. See, weak leadership uh, gets involved with what we call finagling. You got to be straight and to the point. Weak leadership schemes and does stuff under the table. Help me somebody. Yeah, weak leadership. Watch what weak leadership does. Weak leadership uh, uh, gets uh, uh, money, gets a $10 million. It's over $10 million. And they make deals with their friends and say, I'm going to give you uh, legally, you get this $5 million, but I got to have a million of it back. Uh oh. They call it kick back. Oh, it may not. The GAO may not find out about it, but I got, I got new. The, the Inspector General may not find out about it, but God knows about it. He knows what's right. He knows when we are right and when we are wrong, and we must give an account to the deeds that we are done in our body, whether they right or whether they are wrong. Notice the plot of Jezebel. She said, Ahab, baby, let me handle it. And she says, i tell you what we're going to do. We're going to uh, set Nabal up. We're gonna, and then we're going to get some false witnesses who are going to say what, y'all don't hear me, what I want them to say. Some people all they want is some money. They'll say anything. 
Can I get a witness? And they get, they send a message to the elders of, of, of Jezreel, like, of Jezreel, and says to them, uh, get neighbor out there. But you know, what I found out is that y'all not sell your soul. If they knew it was crooked, they shouldn't have been a part of me. They were going to set neighbor up for the fall. You ought not be part of stuff. You know it's wrong. Help me somebody. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you got a job and you got to do what's wrong to keep that job, you don't need that job, not as a Christian. Because if you lose that job for righteousness, God's got something better for you. He, he didn't want you to have that anyway. If you suffer, Peter said, as a Christian, don't be ashamed of it. Stand up. Don't lose. Don't throw away your integrity for a few dollars, for a position. And then what I observe about people who compromise their standards for a position, they end up losing the position anyway. Because, y'all don't hear me, they told me, how did they put it? Uh, if one uh, uh, bring a bone there, take a bone. They said it another way. They said, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. If they know something on you now, y'all, you do something wrong, they know about it, and they're going to hold that against you later on. They got something on you they can use against you because you went along with what was wrong. I'd rather lose it and keep my integrity, help me somebody, than to give it up and have some folks, some on me. Yes. So they, they, they set neighbor up and they got neighbor before the elders and these false witnesses come in and testify falsely that neighbor had blasphemed God and he had blasphemed the king because he wouldn't give him what he wanted. And Nabal is stoned. He's killed. And then here comes Jezebel. She gets the news. Say, Ahab, guess what? Nabal is dead. And he's stoned and dead. Get up from here and possess this vineyard. But do you understand? God, the old folks say God sits high and he looks low. And he, when Nabal went to possess the vineyard, God spoke to Elijah. Yeah, during this reign of weak and wicked leadership, he says, Go meet. Ahab, he's in the vineyard of Nabal. He, Nabal has been killed and he is ready there to possess it. And Nabal and, and, and Elijah sees Ahab. And that brings me to my last point, is that there's going to be a payday someday. Can I get a witness? Weak, ungodly leadership. There's going to be a payday now and in eternity. Yes, and I hear Elijah says to Nabal, the word of the Lord came to Elijah, the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of, Assyria, of Israel, which is in Samaria. He is in the vineyard of Naboth, where he's gone down to possess it. And thou shalt speak unto him, talking about payday, saying, Thus said the Lord, Hast thou killed and also taken possession? 
Remember, it uh, reminds me of when David had Uriah killed. And he went and married Bathsheba. Can I get a witness? God held him accountable. Yeah, and he says, yeah, he married Uriah's wife. God had not sanctioned that transaction. He says, Elijah says to Ahab, in the place where dogs lick the blood of neighbor, they stone neighbor until he died. Shall dogs lick thy blood? Can I get a witness? Blood from blood, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. And Ahab said to Elijah, has thou found me, O my enemy? And he answered, I have found thee because you have sold yourself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. And God said, not only am I going to do this to you, but I'm going to do this to your posterity. Your posterity. And I'm going to cut off all of your seed. And uh, he put it this way. Uh, him that pisseth against the wall and him that is shut up and left in Israel, I will make him like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. I came to tell you, weak and ungodly leadership, that you must give account to God Almighty. You might be riding high right now, but payday is coming after a while. I heard him uh, say, y'all don't hear me. Oh, God said, look at here, Jezebel. God's going to deal with you too. She said, the dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. And I can see God speaking to Elijah, saying to Elijah, go tell Ahab that thus said the Lord, payday is coming after a while. I came to tell each and every one of us today, God's gonna call us all to give an account of the deeds done in our body. And I want you to know, one of these days, payday is coming after a while. One of these days, it's gonna all be over. One of these days, we're gonna have to lay down and die. One of these days, we're gonna have to answer to a God who is righteous, a God who is holy, a God who's without spot or blemish. He's holy, he's righteous. Payday, someday. Can I get a witness? Yes, God wants strong leadership. He wants leadership that'll stand for that which is right. God bless you. May he keep you is our prayer. Will there be one that you can open up your heart and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior? We ask you to do so because if you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and he died for your sins, he raised him from the dead, the Bible said, Thou shalt be said, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And if you are, need to be baptized, you can contact us, 334-262-6825. Amen. Or you can correspond with us, 2106 Mill Street, Montgomery, Alabama, 36108. Bethel Missionary Baptist Church. 
Amen. God bless you and may he keep you is our prayer. And until we meet again, may God's richest and best be yours. Amen. Amen. <laughs>